Hello, ImageCon 2020. My name is Morgan Gerfinkel, and I'm a senior product manager on the Adobe Photoshop team. Today, I'll be introducing the Adobe Photoshop Lightroom APIs that my team has been working on. After that, I'll pass it to Gary Balabio, who's the head of technology partnerships at Cloudinary, to describe the beta that we're working on for the Photoshop Lightroom add-on on Cloudinary. So first off, the Adobe Photoshop Lightroom APIs. What are we trying to do here? So number one, Adobe Photoshop Lightroom has been a software that professionals and hobbyists have used on the desktop and mobile for years. You have fine photo editing capabilities and folks use it to uh, edit photo shoots and all kinds of personal photography, but it's limited to the desktop. So that with this initiative, that's going to change. We're bringing the power of this technology to developers, and that'll benefit you at Cloudinary. So for those of you who are not familiar with what Lightroom specifically does, let me dig into it a bit. Number one, you have certain manual tools. So on the right, you could see some sliders. You see temperature and tint and vibrance and saturation. There's things like exposure and contrast, dehaze and clarity. There's, there's a number of sliders that you could change to finally change an image. And we're bringing that to the service firsthand. So you'll be able to do that as a developer, change each different slider individually. But that might be tedious. You might want to do more than just change the exposure on one image or many images. So there's the concept of a preset, which is a more automated tool. A preset is a recipe of many of these sliders put together. So if you change the temperature, exposure, dehaze, and clarity, for example, and save that as a preset, then you could take that preset and apply it to one or many photos, thousands, hundreds of thousands of them at once. And that's kind of what you see on the right-hand side with that cascading waterfall image. We made a preset which desaturated everything but the greens, and you could take that and apply that to thousands of photos if you so chose. Some of the other auto tools include auto upright, which is to make pictures that are crooked, straightened out, or auto tone, which is to take photos that maybe you took outdoors and wanna change the lighting le level so that they appear more uniform. So these are some of the things that you can do with Adobe Photoshop Lightroom that we'll be bringing to developers. Now, you have some of the features. What are some of the use cases that you might use this for? So first and foremost, image editing at scale. So there comes a point where you can have projects that you could take lots of people, install Lightroom on the desktop, and then have them work on projects, churning out lots and lots of content. But in reality, you hit a point where you might wanna do these things at scale via the cloud service. And that's what we're bringing to bear here. So image editing at scale, number one for the Adobe Photoshop Lightroom API. Number two, user-generated content. So frequently, if you have user-generated content, folks uploading all kinds of images that you can't really control, they lack uniformity. How do you make them feel the same, feel on point for your brand? You could take some of these tools from Adobe Photoshop Lightroom and do that, apply certain presets that make them look similar, things like that. Also, if you have, let's say, a social media site and you want to uh, reveal some of these features to your users, it could facilitate some serious personalization that your users will love. The third use case involves publishing directly to web. And this would include e-commerce companies, media companies. So you imagine a big news agency, uh, something like that, where you have lots of images that you need to go from production right into your website, into the right spot in the right format, edited properly. So the old way of doing that might have been to download, process, re-upload, get them approved by your creative. At this point, your creative could just do this work give it to your developers and they could push it uh, to your site automatically. And last is pre and post production. So there are use cases where, uh, you know, your professional photo editors are editing raw images and compressed images, and they need these pro quality tools. This is what they're used to. So you could get things batched up so that it's automated from the start. A Photoshop is a photo shoot is done. And then the images are pre-processed. 
uh, and ready to do some serious editing on on the desktop, or you could have things completely pushed and done automatically. So with all that said, uh, thank you for your time. Um, what we're working towards is a beta to allow these features to be uh, you know, consumed by Cloudinary users. And we're really excited about that. And uh, to talk about that some more, uh, I'll pass it over to Gary Balabio, who will dig into what this beta looks like for you guys. All right. Thank you, Morgan. And also, uh, it's great to welcome Adobe uh, to, to ImageCon. It is great to be working uh, with you and the team on, on all this. And uh, this is something that we're really excited about. Uh, to take you know the the power of the professional editing capabilities you know of Lightroom, uh, which traditionally has been on on the desktop, and making them available via an API, and also integrating you know that API with Cloudinary, you know provides some really power uh, provides a really powerful combination uh, for uh, companies for users uh, that we're you know really excited uh, to put to bring to market. The um, just to just from uh, just to summarize, you know, a little bit more, you know, what what, what Morgan said, you know, from our perspective, um, the combination here is what's quite exciting uh, to be able to think about uh, the workflow that occurs today when a uh, photographer or somebody, you know, wants to take a photo and they want to edit it uh, through Lightroom and then scaling that process, you know, across hundreds or thousands of photos. Uh, today, uh, quite hard, you know, to do that, you know, uh, with Lightroom, you know, itself on the desktop, uh, and then take that content and then also make it available, you know, on the website, and and this is where combining the two technologies um, really provides a lot of power. So when you think about the workflow today, uh, you may have a photo shoot, you you put your your photos into Lightroom, you make your edits, maybe you save those edits uh, into uh, some sort of preset and apply those across, you know many other photos. Uh, so, so there are capabilities that can be you know, provided there, but then you need to export your content, upload it into some sort of uh, publishing system, and then uh, you know, eventually you know, uh, publish them on, on your website. So there's a lot of steps involved in the process today. Where we are going with this, you know, by combining the API uh, from, uh, from Lightroom uh, with Cloudinary, is we're eliminating a lot of steps and we're automating you know, a lot of these steps. So we're putting a lot of power uh, into uh, developers' hands uh, to, to basically automate this process. So in the future, you know, with this uh, combined technology, you'll be able to conduct a photo shoot, upload them in the Cloudinary, and then from there, apply the edits, apply uh, the, the Lightroom uh, effects, transformations that you want to make to them. Uh, in the background on the fly and then deliver them out you know through cdn uh basically making them uh ready for internet consumption uh, and so this is you know something that cloud and can provide you know at scale uh alongside uh with lightroom and this is why we're so you know excited about combining these two technologies uh there's great benefits in the alg algorithms that adobe provides with lightroom and there's also great benefits you know in terms of what cloud and can provide um, in real time uh, for, for content uh, in terms of optimization of the content and publishing of that content. So with that, I think what I'll do is from here, I will, uh, I will run a quick demo of the actual offering. I'll show you where we have it available on our, uh, on where we will have it available on the website and uh, some of the capabilities from, from a high level. So I will share my screen here. So just first off, the, the add-on is going to be available on Cloudinary's add-on page. So uh, this is the add-on page here. You'll see an Adobe Lightroom uh, icon uh, somewhere around this page, uh, likely available towards the top once it actually moves into production. And so you would basically click on that, and then this is where you would sign up for, uh, for the service, like any other Cloudinary add-on. As part of this uh, offering, we also developed our own demo. Uh, this is available to the public. It's available at adobedemo.cloudinary.us. Uh, so anybody can go there and, um, and try out the service with a, a sample photo uh, that you can upload. So we, we put mechanisms in here uh, to upload sample content. We have 
Clavinary's upload widget available here. Uh, you can upload content from your desktop. You can choose content from any sort of web address, or you can do a, a Google image search and um, upload something. So with that, I'll, I will, um, I'll, I'll choose a, a, an image you know, myself. So I'll just, uh, I was watching a documentary last night of Michael Jordan. So I have him on my mind. So I will choose a quick image of, uh, of him. So this one looks pretty good. There's some great photos here, obviously, of, uh, of Mr. Jordan here, but we'll choose this one and upload it. Okay, so here's our image uh, that, that we've selected here. And there's a lot of capabilities that Adobe Lightroom is bringing to the table via an API. This is um, mostly all the capabilities uh, that, that can be applied. Um, and again, this is just for a demonstration. Uh, the, uh, the interface on Cloudinary is API based, it is URL based, but we made this to help everybody understand the capabilities that are provided, as, as well as to show you how to um, create the URLs to essentially um, utilize these, these capabilities. So there's a lot that I can do here with this photo. Um, I can you know, change the contrast, right? reduce or change the saturation, uh, you know, create a vignette uh, around it. Um, things like dehaze, uh, you know, increase or decrease the, the sharpness of it. Um, for this particular one, I will uh, choose uh, some 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 capabilities, you know, that are just obvious, uh, so that you can see, you know, some of the changes that we're making specifically, you know, with with uh, with Lightroom. So, for example, let's say I wanted to um, modify the uh, let's say I want to reduce the noise and I want to reduce the color and sharpen it. Um, I don't know if this is actually advised uh, necessarily okay. by, by Lightroom. Yeah, let's, go ahead. Let's try, let's try, you know, if, if you want to see it, you know, clearly, let's take the saturation down to negative 100. That'll make it black and white. Um, let's increase some dehaze, uh, make that really loud. So the dehaze slider. Uh, maybe not a hundred. Maybe let's do like, you know, yeah, something like that. Uh, what you'll end up seeing is that the Michael Jordan picture goes black and white. Uh, maybe add a vignette as well. Uh, you know, that'll be around the the borders of the image. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I think you'll be able to see quite a bit there. Um, and again, like we were describing earlier, you could save. Like, let's say you you make this edit or your creative team made this edit in the background and they really liked it, something like this could be saved as a preset and then applied to 10,000 photos. So they would all have the same look and feel. So that's really interesting as well. Let's see what this one looks like. Okay. So uh, we have some other cloud and edits that we can make here as well. Um, but what we'll do is we'll just create the transformations really fast. And this is going back to the Lightroom API. Uh, so it's going through Cloudinary. Cloudinary is making the call to the Adobe servers. And you see here, it's really, really nice black and white photo, you know, that's created. Um, here are, uh, with Cloudinary, you know, specifics, I didn't choose any Cloudinary specific transformations to apply, but if I did, they would have been showing up in this URL. And, and this is by applying our F-Auto and Q-Auto uh, transformations. So we have here, here's the original file coming from uh, from Adobe. So you see here the new um, inputs, so E underscore Lightroom, and then noise reduction at 49, color noise reduction at 49, sharpened detail at 100, saturation minus 100, dehaze 31, vignette uh, as well. So this is the, the original JPEG uh, here. And then we combine this with the Cloudinary uh, transformations. So here is the uh, the, the specific Lightroom effects. And then we have uh, essentially another directory where we're applying F-Auto and Q-Auto from Cloudinary, uh, where we're optimizing uh, the size, so the quality encoding, as well as optimizing the format. So here, in this case, serving it as, as uh, WebP, because I'm in Chrome, uh, but you can see that the original file is, is a JPEG. So there's other things that we can do here. Um, so if we wanted to, you know, maybe maybe we don't want to uh, sharpen it as much. Uh, maybe we, uh, I don't know, maybe don't apply the vignette as much or uh, the saturation. Maybe we want to take the saturation, you know, up a little bit. We can apply auto tone 
to this. So auto tone is, is a feature available in Lightroom today. This will automatically detect the best settings for the actual photo itself. And maybe we want to use cloud and areas cartoonify function. So you could see how uh, adding an effect or a filter on, on top of the photo on top of Lightroom, you know, can be uh, utilized. So, so here's, here's auto tone, you know, basically applied with those other effects. There's the, uh, the cartoonify uh, through cloud and area. Um, this is also with, with Cartoonify as well, and this is with our F Auto and Q Auto uh, applied. So you can click on the link here. You can again see, you know, some of those elements, uh, and then you can also take a look at, you know, the format and the quality encoding, you know, that's been uh, provided by Cloud Mary. Go ahead, Mark. Hey, Gary, I think what you're seeing on, if you go back to the images that were edited in this case, um, the Adobe. Photoshop Lightroom edit was pretty subtle here. You applied auto tone to an already pretty much edited photo, so it didn't do too much. Um, but you know, there are there are cases where you know, especially in user generated content, if the lighting is off, an auto tone alone would be you know pretty dramatic to bring it up to par. Um, and obviously, the cloudinary transformation did quite a bit here. Um, yeah, you could see a subtle change on this one mm -hmm. with the Michael Jordan photo. But again, the Photoshop Lightroom API isn't always about making a dramatic change to every picture. It's about having very fine control to bring things to another level. Um, and you could be, you know, as, as, you know, subtle or as, as, you know, bold as you'd like to be. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so we, we didn't really go through um, autotone, uh, but this is the, I think, I mean, we, we went through it. The, um, I think the transformation that AutoTone is, is providing is actually quite nice, you know, from my perspective. Uh, this is the original. This is AutoTone. I mean, just the, the colors just seem to pop a little bit more. There, there's some, you know, there's less, uh, uh, there's less whiteness, I guess, in the, uh, in the photo itself. So that looks great to me. Um, so there's, um, there's certainly a lot that you can do here, especially when you think about all the different combinations of possibilities. I think, also, you know, it's important to note, like, like we said, you can ap apply a preset so that, you know, you can save this, you know, if you like any sort of combination here, uh, you can save it as a preset and the preset could also be applied through Cloudinary as well. So you can call a, a preset through an in URL um, uh, indicator. And then from there, we'll be able to pull that, uh, that preset and apply it across all the photos that you may want to edit uh, with that Lightroom preset. Yeah. So and Gary, uh, another in, another interesting angle is that you know if if you have Adobe Photoshop Lightroom on your desktop, you could test these changes and and come up with presets that you really like and save them out and then upload them to Cloudinary, knowing that you love these presets already and you could just batch them and you know edit as many photos as you'd like. So you know you don't yeah. necessarily have to pass everything back to the server, but uh, you know if you have presets that our company approved, for example, really easy to upload and, and use them at scale. Yeah. So uh, really, really interesting stuff. I think this is very powerful um, and it's, uh, it's really great to bring it to market and get creatives working directly with developers on, on how to apply it and how to use it. So um, that was just a brief introduction. Again, the, uh, the demo itself is, is available to all. You, the, uh, the beta itself, uh, will be available on our add-ons page. Um, in the meantime, you can use the demo to take a look at, at how it works. Um, so just some quick notes uh, related to the actual timing of uh, you know, the, the, the availability. So we expect it to be available in Q3 of 2020, so Q3 uh, this quarter. Uh, we will make a, uh, uh, an availability announcement you know, to our customers when this is available on our website. It will be a, an open beta. So this is a public beta uh, available to everybody. Uh, it's limited to 1,000 API calls per month. Uh, so free beta. Once you hit 1,000 API calls per month, there's no more calls that you can make uh, in, in that month. So, But it should be plenty for anyone to really try it out. Um, if you do require more API calls, uh, definitely reach out to us and let us know if there's a use case that you want to apply this to that requires you know, additional usage. We're happy to, to see what we can do to support that. So you can contact your CSM or contact support at cloudinary.com. Um, but 
other than that, uh, this is uh, this is a really exciting offering. And um, if you have any questions related to it, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, so Gary at cloudinary.com, you can go to support at as well. And we thank you for your time and thanks for, uh, for, for listening to us. All right, have a great uh, conference, everybody.